If your foundation of health and your foundation of hormones and your foundation of metabolism isn't right, it's going to be very hard to get the most out of any kind of exercise or fat loss protocol. In previous episodes, I talked all about the science and the details going into particular protocols. We don't have time to do that now, and I want to get to the new material. However, there are a couple bins, a couple items that you should make sure you're getting correctly. And if you're not perfect about these, don't worry about it. Most people are not perfect about them. I'm certainly not perfect about them, but we should all be striving to get quality and sufficient sleep. I did four full episodes on sleep and how to get better at sleeping through things like light exposure, temperature, timing your sleep correctly for your so-called chronotype. If you're a night owl or a morning person, that's the first four or I think five episodes of the Huberman Lab podcast. Get your sleep right. Get your light exposure right. Avoid bright light in your eyes at times you want to be asleep and get bright light in your eyes at times you want to be awake. So get your sleep right. The other thing is essential fatty acids. I talked about this in the food and mood episode, but I also talked about it during the hormones episodes. We need fatty acids. They are vital to so many aspects of our health. You don't have to get them from supplements. You can if you want to, but you need to get them from your food. They are essential. There's a reason there's an E, the essential part there. Of the fatty acids, there are multiple kinds, but for the antidepressant effects or the, the levels of fatty acids that will promote good mood and also healthy metabolism and will start to shift the needle in the right direction on bloodborne cardiovascular factors, the key thing is to get the levels of EPA that you ingest above 1000 milligrams per day. So that doesn't mean just taking a thousand milligrams or more of say fish oil or krill oil or whatever your preferred source is. It means getting above a thousand milligrams of EPA, which may require that you ingest more essential fatty acids than just a thousand milligrams per day. That of course can be done through food sources, things like fatty fish, or if you're not, uh, if you're not into eating fish, you have quality meats that are grass raised can do that. There are other sources of essential fatty acids, of course, also from plant sources. So look those up online. It's really easy to find, but the research in the literature shows that you want to get above a thousand milligrams of EPA per day, because that's when you can best support your metabolism and position yourself for good fat loss as well for people who have cravings issues. They, they crave sweets all the time. I talked about this in the gut brain episode and hormones and food that you have neurons in your gut that are craving, they're seeking essential fatty acids and they're craving and seeking amino acids from your food. Now, these are not supplements that they crave per se. They're craving those things because that's what your body needs and your brain needs. But those same neurons will respond to sugars. And so many people who are craving sugar can satisfy that sugar craving by giving the neurons, so to speak, what they actually want, which are amino acids and essential fatty acids. That includes EPA, but also things like glutamine, an amino acid that can really reduce sugar cravings if you take a teaspoon of that or even a tablespoon of that a few times a day. You have to ease into that a little bit because some people can get a little bit of GI distress from too much glutamine, but Glutamine has also been shown to improve symptoms of leaky gut. It's a powerful amino acid. And yes, you can also get it from food. Things like cottage cheese are high in glutamine, et cetera. And then finally, you can't really position yourself to have a strong metabolism if your iodine levels aren't correct and your thyroid levels aren't correct. You can overdo iodine, so you don't want to do that. A lot of table salt has iodine added to it, but some people need to add iodine they by ingesting things like kelp, et cetera. But one of the best ways to support the thyroid system and metabolism in general is to make sure you're getting enough selenium, sometimes called selenium each day. Simple way to do that is to ingest the highest concentration of selenium food that I'm aware of, which is Brazil nuts, one or two or three of those per day, you'll have more than enough selenium uh, to meet the thyroid needs. You don't want your selenium to be too high. You don't want a diet too high in anything. So again, sleep, sufficient EPAs, glutamine, if you have issues with leaky gut or sugar cravings can really help. Get your gut microbiome right. I may have uh, missed saying that, but get your gut microbiome right. That does not necessarily mean you need to ingest probiotics. 
You can if you want to, but you can also just simply ingest a serving or two of fermented foods per day. That can greatly assist. So things like sauerkraut, kimchi, every culture has a different um, source or sources of fermented foods. Those can really help the, the gut microbiome. And then make sure that your thyroid hormone is supported through the ingestion of sufficient iodine, not too much, and sufficient selenium, not too much. Okay, sleep, EPA, glutamine, fermented foods, iodine, selenium. That sets the basis for how things like exercise, cold, and some of the compounds and other things that we're gonna talk about today that are, I'm guessing, truly going to be truly new to many of you that can really increase the burn factor in the equation of calories in versus calories burn burned. Okay. So on the one hand, we have this reality of calories in versus calories burned. However, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention an incredible study that was done by my colleague, Aliyah Crum at Stanford. She's a faculty member, a professor in the psychology department, looking at how belief effects, just thinking can impact the effects of things like exercise on weight loss. These are just incredible results. What they did was they took subjects who were hotel service people that would clean the hotels and come in and change the, the linens and so forth, divide them into two groups. One group, they were told moving around and doing your duties for your job, uh, meet the standards for US guidelines for activity and movement, et cetera and a basic lecture about how movement is good for you, et cetera, but mostly just that their daily activities met the standards for the US. The other group, however, was given a bunch of information about how movement and their daily routine was very good for cardiovascular health, it could be good for weight loss, et cetera. And then they tracked these subjects over a period of many weeks. The take home message from the study was that simply being told that movement is good for you, can lead to weight loss, et cetera, led to significantly more body fat loss, waist to hip ratio changes in the direction that most people would want, essentially a slimming down, if you will, and all sorts of other positive effects on things like cardiovascular health, simply by the knowledge that movement and exercise can help various health markers. So this is remarkable and it speaks to the power of the nervous system and the power of belief in governing aspects of our body and our physiology that one would otherwise think were outside our conscious control. Now, of course, any of you that think scientifically, which I imagine if you watch this podcast or listen to this podcast is all of you by now, probably thinking, well, maybe they just moved around more or maybe uh, you know they uh, stood up and, and sat down more. Maybe they... They did something else that was different. And indeed, there's a strong possibility that they did things differently than the other group. But the mere knowledge that exercise is good for you, that movement is good for you, shifted their behavior and their physiology in the direction of enhanced weight loss, fat loss, et cetera. So how we think about a given set of activities affects how we perform those activities and how we think and perform about and perform those activities has a real effect on our physiology.